India, the land of grand empires and ancient traditions. But how did this nation, once ruled by the mighty Mughals, come under British control? Today, we delve deep into this captivating tale. After watching this video, we assure that you know each facts of British control over India and the downfall of Mughals. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, request you to please subscribe and press the bell icon to receive notifications of exciting videos in our series, which we bring exclusive to you all after thorough research. It all began with trade. In 1600, the East India Company, a British trading firm, arrived in India seeking spices and textiles. London, 1600. The city buzzed with tales of distant lands, spicy treasures, and golden opportunities. At a grand building, a group of merchants huddled together, fueled by a dream. Merchant 1. We've seen the Portuguese and the Dutch bring riches from the East. Why shouldn't we? Merchant 2. Agreed. We'll form our own company. The British East India Company. Their first stop? Indonesia. But it wasn't as easy as they thought. Merchant 3. Looking frustrated. The Dutch already have a strong grip here. We can't compete. Merchant 1. Then, let's change our course. To India. A land ruled by the mighty Mughals. The British knew they needed the Emperor's blessing. Merchant 2, Your Majesty, we come from Britain. We wish to trade in your rich lands. Jahangir stated, Why should I trust you? Sir Thomas Rowe, confidently mentioned, Your Majesty, we come with respect. We want a partnership, not just profit. Let us show our sincerity. It took nearly years to convince Mughals. Gifts, words, and many meetings later. Jahangir, smiling, all right, set up your trading post in Surat. Let's see if the tales of British integrity are true. Finally, British East India Company, set foot in India. And a journey it was. From Surat, they traveled far and wide. Many local rulers stated to British East India Company, you helped us in our time of need. This land is yours. With each act of help, a new chapter began. The British weren't just traitors now, they were allies. As time moved, the mighty Mughals weakened. The company saw this. Robert Clive mentioned very clearly, we have the strength now, not just to trade, but to rule. From dreamy docks in London to ruling vast lands in India, the tale of the East India Company is nothing short of a grand adventure. Their story, like the spices they sought, added flavor to the pages of history. Now, for some lesser known facts. Did you know? 1. The East India Company had its own army, larger than Britain's standing army in the 18th century? 2. Many Indian rulers hired European mercenaries to modernize their armies? 3. Tipu Sultan, a southern Indian ruler, sent an ambassador to France to form an alliance against the British? The British East India Company's strategies and maneuvers in India were multifaceted and evolved over the years. Here's a deeper dive into the methods they employed to consolidate their control. 1. Divide and Rule, Strategy. The British often played off one Indian princely state against another. By exacerbating regional, religious, and ethnic differences, they managed to divide potential opposition and keep a balance of power that favored them. 2. Political alliances and subsidiary alliances. The doctrine of subsidiary alliance was introduced by Lord Wellesley, Governor General from 1798 to 1805. Indian rulers entering into this alliance had to accept British forces within their territories and in return, the British would aid them against any external aggressions and internal revolts. Essentially, this made the princely states dependent and de facto subordinate to the British rule. 3. Doctrine of Lapse A policy devised by Governor General Dalhousie in the mid-19th century, this doctrine dictated that any princely state or territory would automatically be annexed if the ruler was either manifestly incompetent or died without a male heir. This allowed the British to take direct control of territories that previously had puppet rulers. 4. Economic Exploitation and Monopolization The company established trade monopolies. India's famed textile industry, for example, was systematically destroyed to favor British-made goods. This severely impacted local industries and resulted in the economic weakening of many regions. 5. Modern Infrastructure Development the British developed railways, telegraphs, and postal services, seemingly modernizing India. But these primarily served the purpose of resource extraction and movement of their troops. The railway network, for instance, 
help them transport raw materials like cotton to ports for shipment to Britain and, in return, allowed for the easy distribution of British manufactured goods in India. 6. Administrative changes and codification of laws. English became the medium of instruction and the official language for administration. They introduced European-style bureaucracy and legal systems, replacing or significantly altering indigenous systems. This ensured smoother control and governance, aligning the administration with British interests. 7. Cultural imperialism. English education, Christian missionary activities, and Western lifestyle changes were promoted. While this led to the emergence of a new educated Indian middle class, it also aimed at creating a class of people who were Indian in blood and color but English in taste, in opinions, in morals, and in intellect, as put by Lord Macaulay. 8. Using force and military might. The company maintained a large standing army. They suppressed revolts ruthlessly and made displays of military power to dissuade any potential resistance. 9. Control over key strategic ports and regions. By acquiring control over major ports like Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras, the British effectively controlled trade and naval routes, which were crucial for their dominance. 10. Propaganda and information control. By controlling and influencing local media, schools, and institutions, the British could shape narratives that favored them and their rule. The East India Company started as a trading entity, but by employing these strategies over time, they morphed into a sovereign force that controlled vast swaths of the Indian subcontinent. They had a sophisticated understanding of power dynamics and effectively leveraged every tool at their disposal to expand and maintain their hold over India. Hope you enjoyed diving deep into history with us today. If you loved this journey and don't want to miss out on more thrilling tales from the past, hit that subscribe button below. And don't forget to click the bell icon, so you're always in the loop whenever we release a new video. Join our community and let's continue to explore history together. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Thanks for watching.